What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Lester Athletes. My name is Chad. One take like always an interesting video for you here on the channel. Today is me grading the most recent re-signings for the NBA season. So, of course, extension deadline was, I think, two days ago when you're seeing this video. So, there were some crazy re-signings. There was crazy no signings as well. We're going to go through some of the most, I mean, honestly, most of the re-signings that we saw um, in time they came out. Um, one of them is placed in the middle of here because technically no timing of announcing when they got signed, when they didn't, um, you'll see. Um, but yeah, let's just get started with Moses Moody. Moses Moody getting a three-year, 39 mil. Also, I think this is the first video where I'm using the new NBA headshots. Kind of love them. I mean, come on. When you see when I see new NBA headshots, it feels like a Christmas almost uh, when I'm seeing them. Moses Moody, three-year, 39 mil. What do I feel about this? I think this deal is kind of good. I mean, B plus is a pretty good grade. I'm not giving this some high grade because, again, it's 11 mil for Moses Moody. He has proven a little bit of, you know, how well of a shooter he's going to be and what he can do on the bench. So 11 mil or not 11 mil, sorry, like 13 mil is not bad for Moses Moody. But at the same time, and again, you have to think about the NBA moving forward. That's a probably good contract for Moses Moody. But there is some question marks with maybe, you know, is he really worth 13 mil? Is this a really good contract? But I think that if you're trying to keep the young core for the Warriors, it makes a lot of sense. Here we have Trey Murphy the third, four year, 112 mil. And I have to say, this is a B minus. I think when you're looking at other contracts, I have to say. Trey Murphy the third 40 year 112 mil kind of interesting because he's making a little under 30 mil probably good better when you're looking at some of the other players so it's probably okay doesn't really matter too much but Trey Murphy the third here he's shown some flashes he's really shown it I do have to admit um you get him for cheap but I feel like is this a hundred percent a movable contract Probably so. I mean, 20 mil isn't horrible. Can really show out if you want it. Um, I'd be interested with the Pelicans and this money situation they have with Ingram, Trey, Herb Jones, Zion. There's a lot of players that they have to kind of pay. DeJounte Murray. Well, DeJounte Murray's kind of on a, on a cheaper contract. CJ McCollum, for example. There's a lot of players that they're going to have to probably let go in the future because of everyone getting their extension. I think Brandon Ingram is going to be the biggest one, and I think a trade is going to be needed to get him out of here. Up next, we have Jonathan Kaminga. This is interesting because of, of course, no deal. There was no deal for Jonathan Kaminga, and my grade is a yikes. I am shocked that there was no Kaminga trade. That's probably the biggest shock right now is that – no Kaminga trade happened. When you look at, you know, Jonathan Kaminga, what he gives to the Warriors and what he is to the Warriors franchise in the future, no deal is interesting. Maybe they're trying to keep it on no deal for a trade piece if they would want to for a younger player. At the same time, though, which also the blonde haired uh, Joker right now is kind of shocking. I didn't expect that one. Um, Jonathan Kaminga for, you know, for no deal. It's just crazy. Let's be honest here. It's restricted free agency. So, you know, maybe nothing happens, but if someone gives him a max contract or close to a max, I would assume the Warriors are going to accept it. But if they don't, I don't know. It would be a huge loss on them if they don't accept a Jonathan Kaminga, uh, what is it called, contract. Maybe they're just playing out because they know with Steph contract how much of a tax they are in right now. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do it. But yikes, it's a, it's a little bit of an understatement in my opinion. Up next we have Jalen Green, three-year, 106 mil. What am I going to grade for this? This is an A contract. Jalen Green is someone that has so much potential for you to get the first ever two plus one three digit contract is amazing. Here's the thing also. We like to talk about how there's the potential of Jalen Green getting traded. 
Here's the thing with this contract. This is a movable contract. If the Rockets really do decide, you know, Sangoon's the future or a man and Reed are our guards for the future, Jalen Green isn't it. This is a movable contract. They will have this year. He's going to be on this team for this first year. Then you're looking at these next upcoming years that are going to, you know, play in this contract, the two plus one, where it's movable. That is something that you can move. And I think that's the thing that I think a lot of teams like is that he's a bet on yourself kind of deal. And he's kind of for only 30-ish mil, which I don't think that's bad at all for Jalen Green. I think that makes a lot of sense for Jalen Green to have. It's really bet on yourself and kind of bet on the talent. And if it doesn't work, oh, well, we can move you out of here. You know, Zach Levine is somebody that's getting paid 40-something mil. So you're telling me Jalen Green at 30 mil isn't a little bit of a steal? I think it's a really good deal, and he's on less years, so it works out well. Up next, we have Jalen Suggs, five-year, 150 mil. My grade for this is a B. I think Jalen Suggs is a great defensive player, a little bit more playmaking. I would really love for him to have, and then he's probably one of the better players when it comes to, you know, certain things with the magic because right now opening up shots with playmaker maybe opening up more shots yourself is a big thing for them Jalen Suggs is interesting because I think defensively he's such a great player and because of that reason I think 30 mil is justifiable now Jalen Suggs in the previous years has maybe not shown it this last year was really showing it to get paid which granted, we'll talk about somebody else. Maybe it only takes one year to show that you need to get paid. But if Jalen Suggs kind of degresses, which I don't think he's going to, then you're probably looking at someone that isn't going to be on high as uh, on the trade market because of this type of contract. We've seen it with you know Jonathan Isaac, for example. We've seen it with other players that they get these big paydays. They don't really show out after a little bit. Jalen Suggs, in my opinion, is contention for that, but we'll have to see if that actually happens. Up next, we have Corey Kispert. This is going to be fast. The grade's a B. It's an okay uh, contract. You're getting back a shooter that's a good forward depth that's really cheap. Good contract, good on you. 10 mil is not a lot and probably movable. Up next, we have Alperin Sangoon, which crazy headshot, in my opinion. I feel like I haven't seen Sangoon in a long time, and... The hair is throwing me off. It feels, it just looks wet. I don't know why. It just looks wet. Five year, 150 mil. This is another A. I think Sangoon could be one of the best players in the NBA, probably like top 20 player in the NBA with his skill set. Um, how long will it take him to hit it? I don't know. But for five years, 150 mil, I think it was well worth it. I mean, that's the only 30 mil, and you're looking at players that are just regular stars hitting that kind of number. I think Sangoon does deserve this, and I think Sangoon is going to be the future for the Rockets. I think Jalen Green is probably a movable pieces, and I think they're just going to put defenders and players that make a lot of sense next to Sangoon. And right now, this honestly, this Rockets team is looking nasty for the future. Up next, we have Josh Giddy. No deal for Josh Giddy, which my grade is a wow. I thought when the Bulls traded for Alex Caruso that Josh Giddy was going to probably get a somewhat of a deal that was like, for example, I thought a deal that would hit maybe a little less than the max, probably still looking around, you know, a 20, 25 mil. Something very affordable, something they can pass, something they can use would be where we're at. Doesn't look like that's the case. So, going to be interesting to see what Josh Giddy brings to this team and will they pay a Josh Giddy moving forward. Josh Giddy is still a good player in the NBA. I uh, Still can pass the ball, still can do a lot of things, has really grown, and I think this next year with the Bulls is going to really show it. Um, but also at the same time, Interested to see how Josh Giddy does and how Josh Giddy shows for this Bulls team. He should be good, but there's always that what-if scenario. Up next, you have Jane Hardy, three-year 18 mil, grades an A-. Jane Hardy on a cheaper deal with so much potential. 
this is good. When he gets time, he's shown out and he's shown that he is a good player in the NBA. This is a great contract for somebody that has that high potential that you would want to keep on your team. Up next, we have Jalen Johnson. Interesting point of Jalen Johnson. Said ago that uh, with Jalen Suggs that when you get these players that um, get these players that barely has shown a lot and gotten paid, it's a little scary. I'm gonna say a minus. I would say an A because I think that he is the future for the Hawks. I think that again, player getting five year, 150 mil makes a lot of sense when you look at Sangoon getting 30 mil. Um, but with Jalen Johnson. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Jalen Johnson is good. And I am so... I feel so confident saying Jalen Johnson's a good player. But at the same time, you've only seen it for one season. And granted, also at the same time, that was only... It wasn't even at the beginning. It was really just kind of in the early-ish, middle-ish stage. And then he started showing off. I still believe Jalen Johnson's a good player, and I think Jalen Johnson's probably the guy for them. But it's a little scary. You can't tell me it's not a little scary. Just a little bit. And last but certainly not least, we have Aaron Gordon, 40 year 133 mil. Um, we'll be interested to see how the Nuggets move around the money-wise when it comes to Aaron Gordon. This is a pretty good contract. You're getting back players that have done well for the team. I think it's not really a big deal to say this is good, this is bad. You can't really say it. It's just a good player on a good team. Um, but I do think that it's going to bring up some issues with contract potentially. I mean, this is someone that's making, you know, 30, what, like two, three mil? Probably actually more, I just realized, doing the math in my head, 34 mil a year. I wonder if they kind of move around some people because of the money situation. But Aaron Gordon is still a good player and should still be on this team. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.